everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Whimsy Meadows, and today we are going to react to side B of The Grace Under Pressure by Rush. Woohoo! Yay! So, as soon as we're ready, and if you want to see um, side A, my reaction to side A, it'll be, you can just click on this little link right up here. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get it started into side B. Let's go. Like, 
and he escaped. Okay, so in this song, um, I really love Alex's playing with his guitar. Where he just, where he just makes it sing, he just makes it sing, and it just sounds so so effortlessly, right? And then uh, with Neil's drumming, and then you have Getty's uh, bass playing and his singing, and this uh, this song, um, the song "The Body Electric." So it could be different things like um when he's saying repeat one zero zero one zero zero one um that could mean something or it could be um because you know computers are all numbers right all ones and zeros you hear that where computers are all ones and zeros so this is possibly one theory could be that from what i see from what i hear is maybe the the machines are trying to figure out what makes a human a human you know what makes them click because all they know is numbers all they know is figures but when they're saying SOS and um, emergency like our SOS is saying that maybe that um, like in the, in the video that the humanoid or the human escaped um, while they're still trying to do some testing they're still trying to figure out maybe they're trying to do some learning how they could become more human as opposed to machines because these are like robots um but that could be just one theory who knows i mean neil wrote these lyrics and he's there's always like some hidden meaning behind the lyrics right us breaking free of not being consumed by machines and not being um consumed by technology because technology was just starting off in the 80s right that was just when it started off and barely barely started in the 80s and with the computers and stuff like that even though nobody had computers in their home yet um, but that's just one theory <laughs> I don't know that's just what I hear as a first-time listener and you guys can all give me your theories about what you believe that the song is about but I'm enjoying it as a first-time listener because like hear all the different sounds of the music which I usually like to do is I usually like to hear all the different sounds of the music and the, all the different instruments and how it all comes together and how Getty sings to these songs but so let's go on to the next one which would be uh, Kid Gloves <laughs> So I 
so what I noticed about the beginning of the lyrics, the beginning of the song, is that it kind of sounds like, you know, when, in the beginning when you're in school, like in elementary school, um, kids could be cruel, they could be mean, um, they could pick on you, make fun of you, if you're anything different than them, right? If there's anything about you that's different, then they will make fun of you if you're too quiet or you stay to yourself too much or whatever. You're not the popular kid, right? Um, and uh, in the beginning, the first lyric is like, it's, it's so cool to be so tough, right? So when you're young, you know, it, it, kids are like, they're tough. Yeah, I'm tough and everything. It's cool to be so tough, right? So like the tough kids are the ones that are supposed to be cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then I noticed that the change in the lyrics, like the last lyric, I cha it changed to... It's so, it's so tough to be so cool. So, and just from li me listening to the first time, what I get to it is, you know, the, it's at first when kids are little, they're, it's, it's, um, it's cool to be so tough, you know, like he's a tough kid, you know, it's, it's cool to be tough. But as you get older, it's tough to be so cool. When you're trying to be cool, you're trying to keep a level head, um, you're trying to be, uh, you know, chill as if nothing's bothering you, as if, you know, I'm cool, you know, nothing's wrong, nothing's bothering me. And it's tougher, it's tough to be so cool. I like the way that Neil flip-flopped, flip-flopped that line. It's first, it's it's cool to be so tough to, it's tough to be so cool. Um, also, the reverse of the golden rule. So the golden rule is, I guess, was it to do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And then the reverse is to do unto others before they can do unto you or something like that. I don't know. That's just my my interpretation of it. You guys can let me know what you think. And I encourage you to let me know if I got anything wrong or just what you guys think of. Because remember, I'm just listening to it for the first time. I haven't had time to study these songs or these lyrics. So that's just from what I'm hearing and just what I'm getting for the first time listening to it. So let's continue on with side B. So the next one on our list is... Um, Red, lin red lenses, which reminds me of how in the war, how um, the soldiers start off by using night glasses, night goggles that are red, and they were like seeing like demons or something, so they were making them go crazy. So they change it to green. That's just what the, the uh, title just remind me of. But let's take a listen and see what this is all about. Red lenses. I see red.
song interesting change it it kind of has that that funk right that funk groove sound to it um, I love all the percussions in this song I mean Neil just was all over the place with his drumming and his percussions it was just like you hear all these different this different sounds and then uh, getting with his bass but then at the same time you hear bass playing and this is at the same time you hear the synth playing which I found is interesting and then, uh, of course, Alex's guitar playing with making his guitar sing. It, it's just it's just funny because I feel like Neil could really pretty much write anything about anything. I mean, this sounds like it kind of reminds me of the magazine, like a magazine he was talking about, and it kind of kind of reminds me of like the Inquirer or those magazines that you would see at the at the market when you're at the checkout stand and how it would be filled with everything in there um and he was like it's like giving me such a headache with all of this this crazy stuff that's going on in the world today it's like do we really need to hear i don't i'm tired of listening to it i'm tired of reading about it i'm tired of just all the negativity in the world i don't want to know about it i don't want to hear about it it's like the news i try to not to watch the news as much as I can because it's just full of negative, negative, negative. And after a while, hearing about it would be like, oh, it's giving me a headache. <laughs> Enough with the negativity. And that's what I get from this because I could read the lyrics and I, it seems like he, like he's talking about, like he's angry or upset about like something that's in like in a magazine or something that, and you know, it's like everything is mentioned in this. I mean, everything that you could possibly think of would be in there. And it's not... It's not just like you guys may see this or read this and not get upset over it, but this stuff triggers me or this stuff is upsetting. Um, so I'm seeing red. That's just my interpretation. <laughs> I could be wrong. But that's how I feel anyways about about stuff like that. About um, I like, <sighs> do we really need to hear all this stuff? Do we really need to know about all this stuff? You know, it's just, that's how I, I get it. And I just really love the changes in the funkiness of the song. I love that Getty could just literally sing about anything and make it. He just, here's some lyrics. It's like they're working the lyrics together. I know they do, but um, I, I just feel like Getty could sing about anything and it would just sound awesome. It makes sense, right? So the last song on this side B, which is just so fun. Um, this one is the Between the Wheels. This is uh, was filmed live at the Snakes and Arrows live that tour, I, I believe. And it's called Between the Wheels. So I'm curious to know what this is about. So let's give it a listen, shall we? <laughs> Right away. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So this one, between the wheels, just from what I can get from it, it's, it's I'm just first up, I'm hearing the music, um, Getty's um, bass playing, you just hear his bass playing, it's just really cool, and then his synth, and then, oh, Alex with his guitar playing and his soloing, and it's just, oh, it's so beautiful, it's, it's so mesmerizing, and it's, oh, he just hits those notes, and it's, you can just see, he can just see it on his face, how he's just like feeling it, you know, he's just really feeling the music and just feeling the groove, and uh, Neil, of course, is just playing the drums and the percussions, and it's another, it's another song that makes you think, right? Because it's like as the wheels spin around and around, it's like generations. Are we, are we just heading for? It's kind of like weird how it, how these this music is was done what in the '80s, but how it, it rings so true today. How we could be like the wheels is spinning, you know? We could be heading toward another war. Um, is war is just something that is, is it? Is our is our generation lost? Is is there any hope for us, um, or are we just going to continue on the same cycle over and over? And it's like how the rabbit feels, you know how the rabbit feels underneath the wheel, where it's kind of like scared, right? It like it doesn't know is it, which way to go. Do I go right? Do I go left? Am I going to get killed? It's trying its best to prevent getting hurt or getting squashed or killed. But it's kind of like with with us, it's like, are we just kind of head toward an, another another war? Are we going to do something about it, right? So basically, are we heading down the same line as before when we could be way up here, and way on top, but then something, something like that happens and we could just like, we could be just hopping around like a rabbit, enjoying our day and all of a sudden these wheels come and it's like, ah, you know, and, and all of a sudden, stuff happens and you're just like, is it going to be the same as before where we start off high society, start off good, like in the, in the uh, was it the thirties, uh, where we were just living it up. And then all of a sudden uh, we, we, we went to where, um, uh, we're like, ugh, can you, oh brother, can you spare a dime? You know, can you spare some change? You know? And, um, it's just, wow. And then, you know, the wars came and the wars helped to bring us back out of this state of like bankruptcy, worldwide bankruptcy. And it's just, it's this mute, this album is, is darker than albums, I guess, before, but it makes you think like Neil's lyrics, Neil's writing, his, his ability to write lyrics. To, it's it's not like, oh, I'm going to write this song because it's going to be a catchy tune. It's going to be popular and whatever. It's to make you think. And and it was like he's, he was way above his time. He was way before his time. And uh, to be there in that crowd and just, you know, for, you, for those of you who have seen them live, wow. You know, what a, what, what. I don't know. <laughs> it's blown my mind. I just like, wow. I mean, every every time I'm excited to sit down to listen to this music because it just takes me somewhere that it makes you think and it makes me want to learn more, more and more about Rush and about these guys. And that's all I have to say about this album. I'm sure that you guys will let me know what your thoughts and you know, in the comment section below. But again, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in with me today as we go to site um, B. If you want to watch site A, my reaction to site A, um, the video will be at, will be listed. So please click on that. Otherwise, guys, I love you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.